welcome to Dove and Dragon Radio. I'm your host, Emma Rushak. <laughs> I can't even say my name today. <laughs> we are here with Nicole Draffin. That's right. And you have your wonderful book out. Why don't you tell our listeners and viewers what that is? Okay. Okay, well, um, the book is called Hyphen Nation with the subtitle, Don't Check the Box. And basically what Hyphen Nation is about is about my journey as a person of color um, living in another country, which was uni the United Kingdom, and how it made me feel and some of the epiphanies that occurred from living in a more, having a more authentic life based on my experience of living overseas. So one of those... Um, things that I discovered was that just going into another country and being treated as an American, it was the first time I'd ever been called an American instead of an African American. Mm -hmm. And you might not really think about why, wow, why would that make such a big difference? And I learned that from living overseas, when you're treated as just an American, somebody based on your own nationality, what happens is that you're treated, uh, uh, taking away the otherness of your Americanness. Um, basically, it changes the way that people perceive you and it changes the way that people treat you. And so going to England and someone saying, oh, you're an American, made a huge difference. I didn't have to worry about um, acting out, acting in any way based on a perceived stereotype that's associated with the otherness of being an American. And when I say otherness, um, I'm talking about that hyphen. Mm -hmm. And I, in my book, there's a, a quote that I have that says, the hyphen, hyphenation of your nationality um, basically acts as a minus sign, and it has the same connotations. Just as a hyphen and a minus sign look exactly the same, mm -hmm. it has the same effect effect on your nationality. What happens is that you're treated as you are almost American, if not for the otherness. And so um, the book talks about that and the epiphanies and the things that I learned, but also it sparked a movement, a, a don't check the box movement where we as Americans, all Americans, Americans of color and just all Americans in general, that we need to stop allowing ourselves to be put in those boxes by calling ourselves hyphened Americans. We are Americans. Doesn't take exactly. anything away from, yeah. Oh my goodness, you said it so well. I, I keep saying this all the time. I'm like, we need to get rid of that, this American. We're all Americans. We need to start acting like Americans as a country, not as a race or, you know, Thank whatever. You. Yes, it, you're absolutely right. And it, you don't really think about it, but when you look at, um, in the media, for example, you know, when they say they want to cats, cats, cast, excuse me, someone who is African-American or Asian-American or Latino-American, mm -hmm. with that comes all these different stereotypes that they don't have. Now, I'm not saying that England is perfect, that the United Kingdom is perfect. However, when you go there, the way that people treat each other is not categorized by just the fact that your skin is brown. Right. Because, in fact, not all brown people are African American. There's Asians, there's Dominicans, but everyone is putting one huge amalgamation. Mm -hmm. And we need to stop checking boxes when we allow other people to um, self define us. Basically, we put ourselves in these little bitty boxes. One of the reasons why I wanted to, to launch this book during this year particularly mm -hmm. was because of the census that we have every 10 years. So you have this census and it wants to know who lives where and what your, how much money do you make and, and, and what is your ethnicity. So if you have 1,000 um, 1, people of color who are disadvantaged over here and you have 1,000 disadvantaged Americans who are white over there, then why do they care when it's 2,000 disadvantaged Americans? Right. Does it, does it help the government choose who they're going to help based on your ethnicity? Or does it mean it doesn't really, that should not be a factor in helping someone. 
you no, should help doesn't. someone because they're disadvantaged. And it just, it, it, it's, it creates the foundation of racism in this country. And I learned that just from my own travels, from living overseas and getting to see this. Exactly. You know, how this you don't have African French or, or African Russian or, Thank you. you know, African. Uh, you don't. Italian. You don't. You have you don't. Italians, you have Russians, you have French. That's exactly have, right. Even if you go to our neighbors to the north, you don't have African Canadians. They're exactly. Canadian. We it's are Canadian. the only country that goes by the color of your skin and go, here's the color of your skin, hyphen, and then American. Exactly. We as a nation need to get away from that. That's exactly right. And so that's basically what this whole movement is about that we need to come together as Americans. You know, truly the only time that I've ever seen us come together in my lifetime as Americans was after 9-11. Yes. When everybody was American, you know, we're all American. We are all American. And let's start treating each other. I think it would help a lot and it would stop um, making people force you to be in little boxes. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll make people see each other as my fellow American. Instead yeah. of, you know, this, they're over here. I mean, look at the politicians. Oh, I want to make sure I get to the black vote. I want to make sure I get to the Asian vote. What about the American vote? Yeah. And it polarizes people. There is not a politician out there on either side of the aisle that is unifying the country. We are That's so exactly divided right. as a nation. And it all starts with checking a box. The eggs. Thank you. I love the way you put that, and you're exactly right. So that's what my call would be, is that let's get together, and that's what this movement is about, um, hyphen nation, to get together and let's work together as Americans to end a hyphen nation, so that maybe in the next generation that they won't even know what the heck a hyphen nation, a hyphen that we lived in a hyphen nation and they won't even know what a hyphened American is because this will be a thing of the past. I want to eradicate it. Mm -hmm. You want to get rid of racism? It doesn't start with just the color of your skin. We have to get rid of calling people by hyphen. American. That's right. That's, That's right. What they did overseas. That's what every other country has done. That's right. You don't have the racism because you're not a race. You're an American. You're exactly. an Asian. You're a, you know, whatever country you're from, that is what you are. You're not exactly. a race. You're not a colored skin. You're not a box. Exactly. And, and you know, it, so many people were, you know, these conversations are had around so many tables, so many people of color have these conversations, you know, and, and what about when you have um, a child who you're white, your husband's black, your child has to choose what they're called. Yeah. They can't just be an American. They have to be African American. They have to choose. And I have so many friends who have to deal with that all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult because we have allowed we have basically allowed ourselves to be put in these boxes. You can't, I mean, you can complain, but why are you complaining about something that you are allowing? Right. If we have the power to stop this. We have the power to allow people to pick up, um, to not put us in boxes, but we have to come together as Americans. And we have to do it without the rioting and without the looting, without the, what's going on in, what is it? Minneapolis or us? Uh, oh, Seattle. gosh, yes. Uh, yes, well, you know, to me, I mean, I find those to be two different conversations. You're going to have your protesters mm -hmm. and you have your rioters. Mm -hmm. So you always, you have that element of people who just want to cause chaos, but then you have peaceful, peaceful yeah. protesters. So I look at those as two different conversations. What, what I see now with the, with the renaissance that's happening, with the uprising, with Black Lives Matter, it's because, unfortunately, you know, I, you know I, I had this conversation where it says, hey, well, maybe we should have named it Black Lives Matter too, you know, because it, but why should Black people in general have to say we matter too? You know, everyone 
yes, of course, all lives matter. But at the same time, it has to be a reminder because those um, black people are the ones who are getting not and not just black. It's people of color that are getting um, basically slaughtered by police officers and treated terribly. So, I mean, not to really get so much into yeah. that, but I think that hyphen nation and the movement don't check the box is a great add on a great piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. to black lives matter because bottom line is we have to all figure out together some way that we're going what we're going to do to make this nation better and it's all it's it's it's, it's an amalgamation of all types of different um groups coming together wait we got rid of it because when America was founded, we had the Irish Americans, we had the German Americans, we had That's the Italian right. Americans. We got rid of those hyphens. What happened? Yes. Well, the Caucasian community is now American. That's what That's we're American. called, you know? That's right. But we still have the Native Americans, we still have the Asian Americans, we still have everything else. If it worked with one group, why isn't it carried over to everything? Well, that part of that has to do with the history of our country. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, you know, besides for the fact that there are less people of color, you know, let's say African American or Latin American than, than white Americans, I think that it's a it's because okay think of the civil rights movement and they had it's it's a privilege it has to do with privilege as a white american you could get jobs go to great schools live in great areas where if you were a person of color you could not live um in those certain areas or get those kind of jobs or go to those schools so the government had to create programs to make sure that people of color were able to get those jobs, go to those schools and live in certain areas. Those were based on the, on your ethnicity. Right. And those were, and they were based on, and so that is why the government almost actually perpetuated the fact that we have to be seen as other Americans. They say, well, as long as you classify yourself as an other American, we will do this favor for you. But, the government created the division in the first place. If the if there were, if all things were equal, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been necessary. Right. And all things are not equal right now. But I think with the removal of the hyphen and saying, "Hey, I am an American. I want to be treated as an American under the Constitution, just like everyone else," mm -hmm. then I think that'll make a change as right. well. Right, we had the civil rights movement in the 1960s. Uh -huh. So, okay, so we created boxes. Well, now we're 60 years later, it's time to remove the boxes. Exactly. It, because all it's doing, it's perpetuating racism. Mm -hmm. It is not helping. No. As seen now with what's going on with this country, it is not helping. And believe me, it's the government has not done anything other than uh, they talk about, oh, we want to do this, but the government has done absolutely nothing to assist with the eradication of racism. No, it and so we have to, as the people, do it. Yes, and it, it goes beyond just the race, it's the why does the government on a job application need to know if you're male or female? Why do you have to check those boxes? Why exactly. do you check your boxes for sexuality? Why? It's a job. It doesn't concern what you do in your house. We have so many boxes out there on an application that you have to check that really you don't have to check them. It's no exactly, one's Exactly, but yeah, but you know that all does go back to um, divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. If you keep people in boxes, it's a very, it's a really good way of controlling people. Mm -hmm. I'll keep you over here and you over here. And when people unify, it scares people in power because the more you, the, the less unity, 
the less, the more power that the government has. But as long as you keep people in little boxes, it, 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 it um, keeps the government um, powerful. Because okay. that's why so many, gov um, not governors, but um, people in the, in the Senate and in the House have been able to stay in those um, positions for, for so 30 long. 30 plus years. Exactly. It keeps them, because, you know, I'm with you. I'm not with them. If people came together, that would scare the government. Mm -hmm. So if we need to come together, we need to unify. Yes. And that is what creates a powerful nation. The Constitution, as it was wrote, was for the people, by the people, of the people. That's the very first sentence. Exactly. We are no longer for the people, by the people, or of the people. We have divided ourselves and we allow ourselves to be divided by boxes. Most definitely. <laughs> well, exactly. Well, you know, um, it didn't say anything about man or woman mm -hmm. in the Constitution at first. Those are part of the amendments. Mm -hmm. It said citizen, mm -hmm. all citizens. Mm -hmm. So they had to add amendments to say, oh, yeah, and women too. Because they said, oh, men are created equal. But that's the, um, that's, that's the, um, division gosh it's some, something of independence it's the it's not the constitution it's the um, declaration of independence yes. that's the declaration of independence that says all men are created equal the constitution does not mention gender at all no. it's in the amendments it mentions citizen yep. so the constitution actually does not even follow the what the law of the constitution because the constitution said that all people um, are basically in this land are free, and, except, but they didn't say, oh, except for the slaves, except for women. <laughs> it was just, it, they had to create ratifications and amendments within the Constitution to add everybody else. Yeah. So, I mean, we have to follow our Constitution. Another thing is that I have a, a, a chapter in my book regarding the Constitution. We need to learn the Constitution. We really need to know. And quite honestly, until I took a class, I was lucky enough to take a class, um, an online class at Yale. And that's how I learned about the Constitution. But if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't know very much about the Constitution at all. Mm -hmm. And um, so we need to educate ourselves and then unify. Yeah. Those are the two things that we need to do. When I was pre uh, 2003, I was mm -hmm. actually taking online classes for paralegal. Mm -hmm. I wanted to learn constitutional law and family law. Those are what I focus on. If it wasn't for my own personal gain to learn the constitutional law, I wouldn't have learned it in school. That's exactly right. And you why have to. Well, yeah, why don't we teach government and constitutional law in school? Because too many people know the knowledge, then you have too many people looking at your elders that are in Congress and the House, and they're removed. Exactly. They, you know, the best way to keep people um, powerless is to keep them uneducated mm -hmm. and to uh, keep them in boxes. And, uh, and being uneducated about your own country's constitution is is insane because if you don't know it you don't really understand if you don't understand it then you really have you're kind of walking around blind and I was for many years as an adult and just when that constitutional law class was the best most eye-opening life-changing class I've ever taken just because I got to learn how this country, what the laws and, and, and the foundations of this country are based upon. And then I looked around and saw how we were not living the values of our country. I see it every single day. This is why we have to end a hyphened nation. We must. We do. And if you look at it as we're citizens, we look at it as we need to rise up as a country, quit looking at the race, quit looking at nationality, quit looking at gender, quit looking at whatever, and we're just people, we're citizens, we have to come together to fix things. 
it doesn't mean changing all the laws. It actually means coming together and living by what's already there. That's, our, that's exactly right. And the scariest thing is that because we are such a powerful country and because our media is global, mm-hmm. American media in general is a DIY for racism all over the globe. Mm -hmm. I've been asked some of the most stupid questions by people based on American media in other countries. And I've traveled to a few countries and I'll say, well, what black, ask me a question about black people. It's just idiotic things that they see perpetuated by the media that teach other people oh well that's that must be the way they are since that's what they show on american tv another way that we as people americans can stop this is to stop giving our money to ignorance which means that if you see a show that that shows a stereotypical demeaning depiction of 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 people of color stop watching it don't put your viewership, take your money away from the commercials that support it. And as soon as we stop giving our money in our capitalist society to people who perpetuate racism, they're going to start changing because they want the money. Right. And we, get, we need to hit them where it hurts. Right. We can protest all we want, but okay, we're giving our money to TV stations, music, yes. musicians. Um, yes. Artists across the board, money that perpetuate, hey, if you're this way, Eight. you have to act this way. That's well, right. No, you don't. You don't have That's to right. be the person that goes, oh, I'm of this race or this color and I have to go smoke this and beat this person up. That's right. That's exactly right. So, once you stop giving your money to and 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 and, and celebrating ignorance, mm-hmm. then basically they're gonna oh people will give you what you want because it's all based on money. Mm-hmm. And so, bottom line, stop giving your money, stop stop contributing to ignorance, and ignorance will will basically um, start um, disintegrating. Right, and I refuse. Here's the thing. When you take away something and you start acting as a people, the people that need the drama, need the race baiting to have their drama, to have something to complain about, to have something to riot about. I'm not talking to protesters. I'm talking to writers. Mm-hmm. Then they start acting out more because it mm-hmm. does be whatever they're protesting, supposedly, is dying. It's going away. It's disintegrating, and they have to rekindle it well you would be actually shocked if you if you if you took the 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 box the area of rioters versus protesters it would be such a small amount but they make it but it's just the one you know it, it makes it bad for everyone but they would it would be too embarrassing for them to continue because yeah. they, it, because it's just such a small amount of people. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, of course, with um, the, our media-based society, they have um, it, it's stopping a lot of people from doing a lot of ignorant things. Because mm-hmm. once they know they're being filmed, mm-hmm. people really, you know, change their, their ways. So we have so, shows like Life PD. They're taking it off the air, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, why are we taking accountability off the air? Why, <laughs> you know, that mm-hmm. one was live TV. That one wasn't scripted. That was accountability. Mm-hmm. Not everything was being accounted for, but you know, went toward accountability. On exactly. Both but we're taking it off. Exactly. You know, each of us as human beings have a right to self-determine who they are based on who they are. Mm-hmm. And because of the hyphens, it is it, it, what happens is that it takes away your your ability to to be your true authentic self because you're either living up to or living down um, or trying to escape from preconceived notions of who you should be based on how you look or the color of your skin. Exactly. So it it this is going to um, change the way we see each other as 
Americans. And that is a very huge thing that I think that we need to start doing. We do. Um, where can we find this book? Well, the um, book is located, it's on Amazon under hyphened, H-Y-P-H-E-N-E-D, nation, N-A-T-I-O-N, or you can go to my website, which is hyphened, H-Y-P-H-E-N-E-D, a little hyphen, nation.com. And either of those, we also have Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. See, we need to get this word out because the sooner we take away boxes, the sooner we start, can start teaching to reflect in yourself mm -hmm. and start acting what, and as an American to actually work toward a goal, not mm -hmm. just a box. That's exactly right. I agree. 100%. So thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. I appreciated it. Thank you. And I hope we can do this again. And perhaps this will get out there to someone that actually is listening and wants to change the world instead of just saying they want to change it. <laughs> Take action. Yeah. Wouldn't it be yes. great if our politicians actually read the book and said, oh, this makes a wonderful idea? Most definitely. I thought about sending it to President Obama or a Biden or, you know, President Trump, someone, and just say, hey, let's, let's see what's going on here. You know? Um, I have a radio show that happens in Cleveland on Sunday night. I would let, love to send you the link if you'd like to yes. call in. And we discuss a lot of this political stuff that we see right now that we need to get rid of. Okay, I would love to. Please send it on. I will be happy to join. Thank you so much. And Thank you. For readers and listeners, watchers, happy reading. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure.